Good evening, everyone, or afternoon, depending on when you watch this. Uh, this is Noah from Compassion Church, and uh, we're going to break things up today. For the last couple of weeks for our church, I've been laying out different uh, tools, you could say, to share our faith. Remember, we looked at, you know, why do we share our faith? We looked at how do we share our faith? Uh, even when do we share our faith? Believe it or not, these are uh, questions that uh, matter. A lot of times we don't share our faith because we don't feel equipped because we can't answer simply, well, what do I even say, right? So uh, we're going to take a, a break from that this week, but it's still related. Something the Holy Spirit has really been working on my heart with, as well as uh, some other individuals I'm walking uh, beside uh, with this, in discipleship with, has been looking at the importance of understanding what it means to obey Jesus, right? It might sound so simple and pretty straightforward. However, I think we're going to see in this small teaching together that this is a topic that I think we are maybe missing it on, or maybe not I'm missing it, just we don't want to because it's really hard. And I'll be the first to say I understand and uh, I get it, okay? So we're going to go through something together. I'm going to encourage you to get your Bible out, get a piece of paper out. This is going to be something really simple uh, for you to see and be able to communicate and teach to other people. Remember, anything I ever communicate, the goal is, is for you to be able to take, take it and run with it. Um, because it's not about me. It's not about any personality. It's always about Jesus. It's always about the Word of God and the simplicity of this beautiful message that can transform lives as we freely give it to others. Okay? All right. So that being said, it's very important to recognize that when we think about obedience, that scary word, right, which we'll get to in a second on what it means, but when we think about obedience, we have to remember that in our culture, in, in Western society, especially the USA, this is a topic that we have to look at uh, and, and take very seriously. And the reason is because, by and large, for many of us, and I, I hate painting with a broad stroke, but I think it's, it's pretty obvious, Many of us read and understand and do things as far as reading the Bible or prayer to better understand versus to better obey. So we'll read books about, about God. We'll be in our Bibles. We'll have quiet times. And we do these things so we can better understand. Hold on. Hey, honey. I'm actually recording a class. Do you want to come say hi? Okay, you got to hold on a second, okay? See? Anytime we're doing this from home, uh, we'll always get a surprise visitor. It could be one of the kids or Michelle, which I love. Uh, Kennedy, you want to come say hi? No, she does not want to. All right, so we'll keep this going, okay? When we look at our society and culture, we read to understand. We read to have knowledge of. We, we pray to understand God or understand the situation, but very rarely does obedience or the desire to obey come anywhere on the radar in our spiritual disciplines. However, what we're going to see is that obedience is actually the foundational cornerstone of what it means to follow Jesus. Discipleship has to be based upon obedience because if it's not, then we aren't disciples. But if discipleship, which is that process of becoming like Christ and learning, if it's based on knowledge and education and just uh, you know, consuming different things, then we're not really disciples, we're really you know, fans of Jesus. And to be a fan is really to sit on the sidelines and, and to know a lot about the, the team or the person, but to be a disciple is to be in the game, is, is to be somebody who is living it out. So this is why this is so important. Let's go to John 14, uh, verse 21 together. You can always pause this if you have to. I have to turn there as well. John 14, 21. Now, I've, I've preached on this before. I've taught this before, uh, but it's so important for us to keep coming back to this. This is Jesus speaking. He says, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will disclose myself to him. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. Uh, forgot to say that. Verse 22, Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, 
he will obey my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not obey my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Okay? Hold on. Yes, honey. You okay? Okay, you got to hold on. So in that scripture that we uh, hear what Jesus is talking about with obedience, it's very clear that there is a line in the sand, right? That if, if we love him, we will obey him. If we are um, you know, with him, then our life is going to be patterned off of a life that is um, doing what he said and asked for us to do. Not just learning about him, not just having education or knowledge. There's a big difference, okay? All right, so with that scripture, I want to hang on to that for a second. So the New American Standard Version, it actually says, um, he will keep my word, not obey. I inserted obey there because that's one of the predominant words used in translating this word. The word used for obedience or to obey, to keep, is tereo, okay? So this means to keep carefully, to guard, to not throw away. Now, turn with me to Matthew 7. 24 to 27, we're going to look at this in action. Okay, go ahead and turn there. Excuse me for one second. Okay, I'm back. So that's what obedience means, to obey, to keep. It means to guard carefully uh, to not throw away, uh, to really hold closely whatever it is, okay? And by hold closely, it means to follow through with it, to hold it so closely that this becomes part of who we are, that the commands and the actions that Jesus gives us are something that we take so seriously, okay? That's what tereo means, okay? All right, now, in Matthew uh, chapter 7, verse 24, we get the famous... Uh, imagery that Jesus uses after the Sermon on the Mount. And listen to what he says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, you catch that? May be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house, yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does, and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house and it fell and great was its fall. What's the defining factor there versus somebody who's foolish and somebody who's wise? Not hearing the teachings. It's doing them. It's obeying. It's following through. See, that's a huge part of our Christian faith. Many of us will be like the person who hears and that's it. And we're scared to step out of our comfort zone. We think that we don't have confidence. Man, I've been studying Acts 3 this week, and I cannot wait to preach that this weekend, um, hopefully outdoors uh, at the gathering, because Peter was so confident in Acts 3. He said, silver and gold, I do not have what I have. I give to you. Okay, I don't even want to go much more into it because I can't wait. But Peter is following through. He's acting upon what he has read, what he has understood, what he has heard from Jesus. He's somebody who's building a wise house, or a house with wisdom on the rock. Okay, now let's keep going here. Um, so we have doing and obeying, right? Jesus talks about it, about building the house. Um, we have the understanding throughout the New Testament with Jesus talking about this topic. So it's not revolutionary. It's not some brand new thing, you know, obedience. It really is the most original aspect of discipleship. It is the ground level, base, beginning, uh, important principle of what it means to follow Jesus. Now, that being said, I want to read a quote from a really good book. It's a little dense, but if you want to read it, it's really good. It's called Following the Master, A Biblical Theology of Discipleship. Okay, I really recommend it. But this is what he says about obedience and discipleship. It's about four or five sentences long. But knowing these things is not enough. Jesus' disciples are called to obey or observe all that Jesus has commanded. His disciples will live different kinds of lives than other kinds of disciples because they will be obeying the most distinctive teacher and teachings of history. 
This is one reason why we should be hesitant to refer to his disciples simply as learners. Jesus' disciples will know the content of his teachings, get this, but the real difference in their lives will be manifested because they obey his teachings. Indeed, in their worldwide mission, Jesus sends the disciples out to make disciples of all nations, which includes teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. His disciples are nurtured in their spiritual lives as they feed upon the teachings of Jesus, but obedience to his teachings provides the necessary spiritual exercise. Okay, so do you see the important aspect of going the next level, going a step further? And obeying Christ. Okay, your, your Bible is the greatest gift we've got and the Holy Spirit. But guess what? The Bible is not meant to be a book that's just consumed for knowledge. It's meant to be a book that we learn the principles of following Jesus and, and, and worshiping God that we act upon. The Holy Spirit was not meant to be given to the church to give us boop, goosebumps and exciting times in gatherings and services. The Holy Spirit was given to the church to provide for us the boldness and the firepower and the energy and excitement to obey and act upon what Jesus taught. Okay, a couple more scriptures. Paul understood this. Look what Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Paul says, The things which you have heard from me, and he's speaking to Tim Timothy, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Do you see what he did right there? Paul is basically saying, everything I've taught you, I want you to give to others who can then give to others. This is not head knowledge. The things that he teaches Timothy, when you look before and after, all of it deals with action, with obeying with being willing to be ridiculed, being willing to be uncomfortable, being willing to step out of your comfort zone, be willing to be put in awkward situations because of, of the cause of Christ. And he says, give this teaching to others so that they will do it and teach others as well. So what is to be passed down to other people, what is to be passed down to your children, to, to grandchildren, to your friends and coworkers, is not your astute knowledge of God is not your testimony only. You are meant to pass down a life and legacy that when people see you, they see that you aren't just regurgitating knowledge about Jesus, but that your life's actions are lining up with the very King of Kings himself, even down to praying for the sick, seeking to heal those uh, with diseases. Fill in the blank. Whatever Jesus commanded his disciples to do, it applies to you and I as well because we have the same Holy Spirit. In fact, they didn't even have the Holy Spirit poured out upon them like we do. So obedience is a huge aspect of this. See, Paul understood that the kingdom message was meant to be spread everywhere. He knows this because surely he heard what Jesus said in Matthew 28. Now, he didn't have a Bible like you and I have, but these were traditions passed around the early church. Surely Paul understood this. That when he, when he hears from Jesus in Matthew 28 and what he had to say, he knew that he had a new life's mission that required a scary amount of obedience that could cost him his life, and it did. Turn to Matthew 28, 16, well, we'll start in 18, 18 to 20. This is the Great Commission. We've already read through it, I believe, four weeks ago in one of our classes. It says, Jesus came up and spoke to them, meaning the disciples. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. See what it says there? Teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Observe is the same thing as obey. The same thing as to keep. It's the same. From the very beginning, the intention of Jesus was to see 
his life and his teachings be obeyed and lived out. And I'm telling you this right now. Okay, this is just you and me. Nothing compares to the joy and the excitement of stepping out in faith into the unknown to obey Jesus even when it hurts, even when it costs you something, even if it's awkward having a conversation, even if you feel like you're being ridiculed, mocked, or rejected. Jesus teaches us, blessed are you when you're reviled for my name. It's a win-win situation, but it is only ever a lose-lose situation when we refuse to obey fully what we have learned, what we have read, what we have devoured in this word of God. Obedience is the missing link. If you were to obey Jesus fully, the things that you know, learn, read, and study in the word, and the things that the Holy Spirit is prompting you in, I promise you will rediscover a fresh demonstration of Christianity that you never knew was possible. You will discover the voice of the Holy Spirit so clearly in your life and in your mind that you don't ever want to leave a time of prayer because his voice is so powerful. Because to the degree that you are able to step out and obey the very teachings of Jesus, the promptings of the Holy Spirit, to that same degree, God can then trust you with bigger assignments, with more influence for people. Not about you, but about the kingdom. So, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? We've got to be willing to obey, even when it costs us. Because it's going to cost a lot, but that's okay. All the tools we've learned the last four or five weeks, they mean nothing if we're not going to obey. So look at your list of people that you made who need Christ, who are far from God. Who are you going to contact this week? Who are you going to obey Jesus uh, with in terms of somebody who needs the gospel message? Who needs to hear your testimony? Who needs a cup of coffee to hear just the love of the Father come through you? Somebody does. And not to put any pressure on you, but I want to tell you one more thing. Actually, we'll just read it together. Matthew 24. 14. Matthew 24 deals with the signs of Christ's return, the second coming of Jesus. Verse 14. Listen to this powerful verse that Jesus says. This gospel, this good news of the kingdom, shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Where is Jesus? Why hasn't he returned yet? What's he waiting on? We want to experience the new heavens and the new earth, uh, things being made right, and justice is being righted. What's he waiting on? He's waiting on you and me. He's waiting to see if we will be obedient. And if all of us can embrace what it means to be an obedient disciple of Jesus, we will surely go through more difficulty. But we will be that much closer, both to the return of Christ, but also the very presence of Jesus living in our lives on a daily basis. I know that's what you want. I'm going to pray for you, then we're going to call it a night. Lord, I pray that you would give us a passion for obedience. I am filled, Father, even with joy, uh, even studying these scriptures tonight and just being able to share my heart about them. I pray, Lord, over our church. I pray that for Compassion Church, it would be a church known as a group of people who are obedient to go and do likewise, to live like Jesus. And I pray that for anybody else not part of Compassion who might see this, I pray that they would be filled with a uh, distinct passion to obey you to new levels, to reach out into their own world, to demonstrate Jesus to other people, that where the enemy has brought lies of insecurity and confusion, that you, Holy Spirit, would vanquish all those lies and would rather instill a newfound confidence and drive and excitement 
to pioneer and live on the edge, being willing to be ridiculed, made fun of, even harmed, Father, for your glory. No joy compares, Father, than living for you. Uh, give us reckless love so that we might demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit in how we live and help us to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everyone. Have an awesome night.